<clears throat> Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy. Uh, recently, my Acura Integra broke down and it turns out it was the ignition coil, which is a common problem on Hondas of this vintage. Uh, the ignition coil is located inside the distributor along with the igniter, which is also a common issue on these types of distributors and setup. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the steps of not only replacing that ignition coil, but what you need to do to replace that igniter as well. Stay tuned. The tools you'll need for this are fairly minimal. Uh, you'll need an eight millimeter to get the distributor cap off, or you can use a Phillips head screwdriver, although I do recommend the eight millimeter. You'll also need a Phillips head screwdriver to get the ignition rotor off. And if you need to remove the distributor, a 12 millimeter, I have a ratcheting wrench here. Uh, it seems that wrenches get in there a lot easier than uh, say a socket and a wrench. Step one is going to be re to remove the distributor cap, which is held on by those eight millimeter fasteners. There's one up under here. Now I've already had this apart because I've already replaced the ignition coil with one I borrowed from uh, one of my other cars, the 99 Civic. So yes, this Integra will share parts with a Civic of the same, of the same vintage. Make sure the screws come all the way out. When you take this off, try to take it straight off like this and then off to the side. In order to remove the ignition coil, which this is the tower sticking up here, we have to remove these two Phillips head screws. However, uh, this, this cover should be here. I've seen it missing on a lot of vehicles because it gets tossed. It's actually a shield. It's kind of important. Uh, but anyway, because this shield is here, it needs to be removed. The only way it gets removed is if the ignition rotor is removed. Sometimes these can seize to the shaft. Well, not necessarily seize to the shaft, but sometimes the screw can be very difficult to get out. Uh, there's also uh, the possibility of a little bit of corrosion in here. Anyway, in order to access this screw with the distributor still inside the vehicle, you're going to need to get this to point exactly in the, in the opposite direction that it's pointed now. You just want to bump the key until you get the ignition rotor to point towards the radiator. With the rotor in position, make sure you turn off and remove the ignition key. This is where the screw, the Phillips head screw, is located on the back side of the rotor. I'm now going to remove the screw. I can't stress enough on having a good screwdriver to get down in here is important. Also, uh, it may not want to come out. Uh, sometimes, like I said, they're, they're in there. And if that's the case, there's a couple of things that you can do. You can remove the distributor. And if you do remove the distributor, what I do is I'll take a, my screwdriver and I'll mark the distributor location so that I can put the distributor back in the exact same position that it was when I took it off. It's not a big deal. There are three 12 millimeter fasteners that hold it on here. Unplug this connector and you can remove the entire assembly. In fact, if you're gonna service the distributor, that's one of the best ways to do it. When you put it back on, know that the keyway is offset, so you can only put it back on one way. Well, I say that, you should only be able to put it on one way, but I've seen people do it the wrong way before. So if you're trying really, really hard, spin the distributor, spin the rotor around 180 degrees and see if it inserts then. The other thing is, if you know that you're gonna replace the ignition rotor, another option is to break the top of the ignition rotor off. I've come in here with a chisel and just knocked it off with a hammer and then come in with a pair of vice grips to undo the screw. So in other words, I grab the outside of the screw with a pair of vice grips to turn it out. That's extremely helpful if you just want to leave the distributor in place and you know that you're going to replace the rotor anyway. I'm going to be doing that, uh, but I'm not going to demonstrate that here because I don't have to because I know this rotor is going to come off okay. So Phillips head screw. Use a good screwdriver. If you've got an old stripped out screwdriver, that may not work to your benefit. I just had this out because as I said, I, uh, I've already swapped out this ignition coil for the one out of my Civic. So I didn't put the screw in really tight. You see how I put my hand underneath there? Uh, that way, if the screw decides to drop, it's got some place to go because if it goes down inside there, good luck. You can now remove the ignition rotor, which may take a little bit of wiggling Avoid getting in here and prying on this plastic part because you'll break it. There we are. And you can now remove this plastic cover. Now we have a full view 
of the ignition coil and the igniter, which is down underneath here. These are the two main components that fail inside these distributors. And in order to remove the ignition coil, as stated earlier, you need to remove those two Phillips head screws here, but you also need to deal with these electrical connections. I only remove this bottom Phillips head screw because that's the only one I feel I need to remove. I actually follow this other wire down and disconnect it from the igniter and I can deal with this outside the vehicle. The only one you have to remove is this lower one here. Good quality screwdriver. Remove the lower screw and again put your hand underneath and be ready for when this comes out because it could fall down into the engine compartment and it is a small screw that you will be loath to find. Now you could just come in and unplug the other connection going to the igniter. Get a little help from my screwdriver here. With the screws removed, you can just slide the coil forward. Now you may see, like on this coil, these hot spots. And this was a working coil, but those always make me a little bit nervous, and I wonder if the voltage is actually leaking out the side of it, which is the reason I'm not just leaving this in here. I'm going to replace it and put this back in the Civic. Installation of the ignition coil is just uh, the opposite steps of what I just showed you, but I also said at the top of the video that I'd tell you how to deal with the igniter. In my opinion, the best way to deal with that is to remove the distributor from the vehicle. So I'm going to do that now. Now, as stated previously, I'm going to come to the top of this distributor and make a mark that I can line up so I can put this back together exactly the way it is. And just doing this means you really shouldn't have to mess with the timing or anything. If you get this lined up, I mean, even if it's off ever so slightly, it's barely a degree or so, it's not the end of the world but this will help guide you and put this back into place, especially if you don't have a timing light or know how to use one. I'm gonna start by disconnecting the electrical connection. There's a little tab on the underside of this that you can just push up and it'll slide off of there. There's three 12 millimeter fasteners. This one's the most difficult to get to. And there's one here and one here on this vehicle, but there's, there's always three. I've never seen any more or less than that. And I know I said at the top of the video that you wouldn't need a socket and a wrench, but on some you do, uh, on this one in particular because the VTEC solenoid is right here. This is what you'll most likely be looking at if you're dealing with something like a Civic single overhead cam. You can see you can clearly get to all the fasteners with just a wrench. And there will be a little bit of oil that comes out when you remove the distributor. Don't worry about it. It's not going to be a lot. But another tip is if you have the distributor out, it's a common leak that the O-ring at the base of the distributor leaks. So you might consider, if you know that you're going to be taking your distributor off, you might consider replacing that O-ring while it's off. With the three fasteners removed, just pull the distributor forward and out of the cylinder head. Here's the distributor I just removed from the Integra. Here is the ignition coil I took out of the Integra that failed. And you may notice it also has that same sign in that same spot. This is my new ignition coil that I was going to install here. Over here is the distributor out of the Civic. That's the ignition coil out of the Civic. Uh, this is the one that I just removed from the Integra that I borrowed from here. And they are the same. So I'm going to use the Civic for the demonstration on how to remove the igniter. The process is virtually the same for the Integra, but I'll just come in with a pocket screwdriver and lift up. I'm just going to move this insulation back so you can see. Ah, well that insulation is somewhat compromised on the Civic distributor and it looks like I might have to do a little repair here. That insulation has broken loose, looks like due to corrosion or something, so I'm going to repair that wire before I put this completely back together. Once again, good quality screwdriver. With the screws removed, unclip it and you can pull this out. Now know that these can be very expensive, mostly because a lot of times they're sold with this heat sink. Make sure when you buy these you're not buying them with the heat sink. So remove the two screws holding the igniter to the heatsink. 
you know, it's unbelievably expensive to buy this with a heat sink. So if you see a really expensive price for this and you're scratching your head wondering why, see if it's sold with this heat sink. There you have it. That's the igniter replacement. Make sure these are snug. Now Honda, to my knowledge, has never instructed putting anything like dielectric grease between the heat sink and the back of the igniter. I'm not going to say that's a bad thing, but as you saw, there wasn't any there to begin with. And as I stated, Honda, and to the best of my knowledge, has never instructed doing that. Slide it back into place. Uh, make sure that yellow blue wire is up in the front there. And I'll be taking this back apart so that I can repair it. Then just put your two screws back in, but don't forget one of these retains the positive lead for the coil. The leads themselves seem to want to go right where they were. So this front one here is for uh, coil negative. And if you're wondering how to tell coil negative from coil positive, right there on the top of the coil. Negative, positive. Remove that wire. Slide the new coil into place. This goes on to coil negative. Now this is an aftermarket coil. I'm not a fan of aftermarket uh, parts for Hondas. However, when I went to price one of these out, it was 150 bucks for the coil. I got this aftermarket one for 41, so I bought two. <laughs> I figured if it's gonna fail, I'll have a spare. In fact, I could keep it in the vehicle. And as stated, if you're having trouble with any of this, particularly the rotor screw, just take the distributor out. Now I'll reinstall the screw for the positive, leave it on the coil. Reinstall my shield. I bet you thought I was gonna forget to hook up that uh, negative lead. Well, I almost did. As stated, I have a new rotor. Here's the part number. This is just for the GSR though. It's not gonna be, it's gonna be different than what's in the Civic. There's a flat on one side. There's a flat on the distributor. Match them up. Now that the screw hole's lined up, I'm going to run in the screw. You don't want to cross thread this. You really, really, really don't. Now we're ready to go back over to the vehicle and install it. I'm now going to reinstall my distributor. My O-ring is good. As you can see, it's not leaking there. So I'm just going to put it back on intact like this. Uh, we remember that this is offset. So as you can see, it's slightly biased towards the front here. It should only key into the cam one way. Uh, so if you're fighting it, turn it around 180 degrees with the rotor and try again. And then work to line your marks up. Now we just took this off and we know that the rotor was pointed towards the front. So we'll do the same when we insert it. And it went right in. Reinstall the three fasteners. Lining up my marks. Once they're snug, give them about a quarter turn and you should be done. Reconnect the electrical connection. I'm also installing a distributor cap. And once again, I'm using an original equipment part for this. I like using original equipment parts on Honda ignition systems. I'm just going to say that. My original equipment cap came with a new O-ring. Probably would have been a good idea to install this before I put it on the vehicle, but we can do that now. This helps keep moisture out, so it's important. So if you are offered a new O-ring, I recommend using it. Make sure it seats in all the way around before you install the cap. Straight on there. This is a plastic cap. Don't over torque it. Once they're down, once again, like a quarter turn after it's snug. Like I said, avoid over tightening these. See all that corrosion? Probably wouldn't be there if not for that crack. To transfer the wires over. The original equipment wires are numbered, which is really nice. But this is numbered 1342, just for the sake of argument. So if you need to, 
One, three, four, two. One is the one that's farthest away from you. And my recommendation is never replace the original wires. They last the life of the vehicle from what I've seen. Replacement wires I've often seen cause problems. So just as an FYI, if you have original equipment wires, consider yourself lucky and don't replace them. Even at 16 years old, I have more confidence in these than stuff in the aftermarket. The only aftermarket wires I'll use now are NGKs. Let's see if it still works. I'd say that's a win. I suppose the question is now, does the Civic still run? Yes, it does. But there's an exception. Here's the exception. I ended up replacing the ignition coil. Kind of glad I bought two now because uh, I put this in and went to start it up. Wouldn't start. But I did notice something interesting. See that? That to me looks like a point of failure. So if you uh, have an ignition coil and you start to see these signs on the outside of it, might not be a bad idea to replace it sooner rather than later. OE parts would be great, but like I said, they're super expensive, at least for the Acura. I just pulled the other failed coil out of the trash. Shows the same signs in the same place. Well, it all still works. I call that a win. And I tried to make this a complete guide, if you will, if you're dealing with uh, the ignition system on a Honda with a distributor. Um, after this year, I think they went to like a coil unplug setup. Uh, so this whole distributor thing went away and it doesn't apply. Uh, but this not only applies to Integras, but applies to Civics. Pretty much if it's a Honda and it's got a distributor, this information will apply. In fact, I'll put a link in the description to a video I did about how to diagnose a no spark condition on a Honda and how to differentiate between a bad coil and a bad igniter. That should save you some money. So that'll be linked down in the description. Uh, also linked in the description will be ericthecarguy.com, which is where I ask you to go if you have questions not covered in this video. If you're subscribed to Eric the Car Guy, I ask that you click the little bell icon so that you're notified whenever I post new videos. Aside from that, be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.